Hello YouTube, it's Ryan here with Hobbies of Man. Once again, today we're going to be looking at another novel. Today we're going to be looking at Hexed, book two in the I and Druid Chronicles, written by Kevin Hearn, published by Del Rey. And uh, the demographic here seems to be adult. I wouldn't really call this, uh, you know, YA, although a lot of current YA basically is adult stuff for um, women. So maybe this can still be read by YA uh, readers, but I definitely think that it is better appreciated by adults. Um, the genre here is urban fantasy, and uh, other than that, I really can't think of any other versions of fantasy that I can fit under. I mean, it is uh, a as urban fantasy as you can get. Um, so, yeah, adaptations-wise, I think there's a comic of this. I would like a TV show. I think it would be really good. Preferably, I would like it to be animated, but uh, I think that there is enough uh, action here that isn't really over-the-top magical that it could be a really good urban fantasy TV show and it would work really well. I mean, most of the characters are human looking, even if they're not necessarily actually human. And I think that it would do well as like a Lucifer type show where it's everyone just looks human most of the time, right? Um, but there is supernatural elements in the background and it would be really cool. I would actually really like to 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 watch a TV show based on this. So yeah, um, the premise is that there's basically no moment of peace for Atticus and a new issue comes around immediately after he beats that one Celtic god uh, or two Celtic gods from the first book. So um, this time it's a coven uh, or a coven of evil German witches that are attacking um, him and the other witches that live in this area to try to take over um, the East Valley side of Arizona, I think is, is what they what they referred to it as. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a pretty interesting book. There's a lot of stuff happening here and it also sets up a lot of what happens in the next book because if I remember correctly, uh, the next book is called Hammered and I think it is when they go fight Thor. Um, and I actually just bought it the other day. So um, yeah, but I do think that um, that it does a great job at setting up for the, uh, the next book. So yeah, the plot line here is that there's this initial attack. They launch these hexes on Atticus and initially he thinks it's the Polish witches that he was antagonistic with in the first book, but it turns out that once he goes talk to them, uh, it turns out that it's these evil German witches that are also attacking Malina and her Polish coven. And so they decide to work together in a fashion because they are still antagonistic against each other. They don't really like each other all that much, but um, for the good of their their region where they live, they will try to work together. So um, that happens. And eventually uh, they will work toge together by the end of the book. But before that can happen, there's a lot of other things Atticus has to do. So Atticus gets contacted by Coyote, which is a, or Coyote, I think, actually would not be in Spanish, would be in, uh, in English, uh, maybe. Um, but it is a Native American god. And he asks um, Atticus to help him kill this demon. Um, so that um, so that his people don't get eaten uh, at this one school, and so they go battle this this um, this this demon that turns out to be a fallen angel. I can't remember the name of the fallen angel, but they learn this because Atticus manages to get a version of Virgin Mary to help him. Uh, what's it called? Uh, anoint or um, like purify these arrows that they can then use to attack this demon and. Um, it's pretty good. Uh, after they defeat this demon, Coyote goes his, uh, you know, on his way, and uh, it, it doesn't seem like they're gonna come back together to be friends in uh, this in the rest of this book. And so, in order to to deal with a new threat that comes up, which is this set of bo bo botchins, botchins, um, which are followers of Bacchus, the uh, Roman god of wine, and also happen to be some sort of like. Um, some sort of sex witch of some sort um, that are trying to stir up a lot of uh, chaos in, in their area. They're, they're starting to try to get revelry going on because they're trying to move into this area and make it their own place. And uh, so he can't actually get the witches that Melina works with to help him. So he asks Laksha, the, the witch that helped him in the first book, to come down to, to his uh, city and to help him with these pockets, and they actually end up having a very strict, um, what's it called, contract. She will kill 12 of them, 
Turns out there was 15, so he has to still battle against three of them. And in turn, he will go get a golden apple from the Garden of Idun, which is a, um, what's it called, a Nordic god. Uh, and this is so that Lakshya can become immortal within the body that she is currently inhabiting. So, um, yeah. They do that, Atticus has to battle three of these other Bacchants. He manages to kill two of them, but one of them goes away, and that seems to be another plot point that is going to eventually come back to to uh, uh, force um, Atticus to battle another god eventually, uh, because right now he can't do that right, uh, you know, at the moment, right? Uh, after that, he actually gets embroiled in Celtic god politics. The Morrigan and Bridget are vying to be the next ruler of Tirnanag, and what happens is that they're trying to use Atticus's power, his iron druid thing, this little uh, amulet that he wove into his magical self in order to protect them from from uh, from magical attacks, right? And um, he actually got the Morrigan to get him to promise to only teach her. Uh, so the Morrigan is currently winning this exchange, and Bridget comes over to visit Atticus and actually gets really angry with him and almost kills him due to um, the fact that he basically snuffs her or snubs her her offer of, of, of marriage because she, she wants to find a way to get his amulet. And it's actually really good because Atticus manages to pull a fast one on her and, and, and manage to get out of the situation, basically, Scott, uh, you know, um, w with no issues or injuries. And it's really, really good. I really like that scene a lot. And so uh, all of that finishes up and it's time to go battle the witches. And it's really great, actually. Um, Atticus manages to get his uh, his vampire lawyer's help by promising to go kill Thor eventually. And so this guy, Leif, uh, manages to join forces with Atticus and they go to town on this German coven uh, of witches. And it's really great, a really good action and a really good setup for the next book. And also a lot of interesting uh, magical attacks and things going on. And even Molina's Polish witches end up being a lot stronger than you would think initially. So overall, very, very good. And there was a lot of great funny scenes that happened in this book. And I really had a great time reading it. So yeah, in terms of characters, we have Atticus and Oberon, his dog. And actually in this book, Oberon gets a little bit of character development because he decides that he's going to follow hippie-esque kind of things. So he's always trying to stick it to the man and he's trying to say groovy and stuff, but he actually ends up saying gravy instead because he likes gravy more than the word groovy and it's really fun. We also get to see some fun little interaction between Atticus and the Widow McDoug and um, uh, some werewolves, which is, is really great. I actually really like the Widow a lot. She's a really fun character and I really enjoy her, her addition to the cast of characters. And Atticus and his apprentice Gr Granule, I think is her name, uh, Granule, uh, don't really get to do a lot of, you know, master and apprentice type things, but they end up having uh, some small little fun interactions that I liked a lot. And of course, the big important things here are the Morgan and Bridget and their politics and how it affects Atticus a lot. I also really enjoyed the way that uh, Coyote and the Virgin Mary were depicted. I thought it was really, really great. It worked really nicely. And it's really nice to see, uh, you know, urban fantasy where Christian things are set up and they're actually used because a lot of times there's this kind of feeling that, you know, it's not okay to use Christian mythology or Christian uh, holy figures because, you know, people might get offended. But I, I like that the, the author, Kevin Hearn, actually managed to still do it and did it in a way that is very respectful and very well made. And so, uh, you know, it's it's really good. I really like that a lot. I think it was it was a, it was a really well handled situation there. So, yeah, in terms of world building, we get a lot of uh, the politics of the Tirnanag kind of thing, but also the politics of how the magic world works. Uh, each group of magical people wants to live in a populated city because it's easier to blend in when there's a lot of people instead of you know isolating themselves in rural areas. And also, it gets a lot of good explanations about how gods exist. And it's kind of similar to how Neil Gaiman describes how gods come to be in his uh, American Gods novel, right? Basically, humans worship uh, these 
things that they you know make up and so all of their worship creates power and then all of this power allows for manifestations of them and it's really really good but also a lot of these gods are also actually just humans that eventually manage to become immortal and become great wizards and so it gives them power and it's really good stuff i really really enjoyed it it was uh very well made and uh it also doesn't bog you down in a lot of like Exp, you know expansive world building so it's really really good it's really easy to understand and and read uh in terms of fan service or like adult uh sexual content there's a little bit here uh there's about there's one scene technically but there's a lot of different kind of moments where you know atticus notices a very attractive woman or there's attention paid to specific parts of women's bodies and so you know you might not like that it really depends on your on your preference but i think that kevin hearn manages to make it seem very very um natural like guys would do this but also it's kind of cringy because it's written down and it's just how it is it's also really funny because that one scene that i'm talking about isn't really like uh like a smutty scene it's literally just him realizing crap i'm out of <laughs> i'm out of my league here i'm gonna get destroyed and it's really fun i i i had a good laugh about it so yeah, overall, good stuff. I would rate this a 4 out of 5. I think I rated the first one a 5 out of 5 or something near that. I don't remember exactly, but I think this is slightly less good than the first one because the climactic battle is a little bit less important, in my opinion. Uh, but it is still a very enjoyable book, and I can't wait to pick up the next one. In fact, I actually just went and bought it, and it's up there right now. So, yeah, um, very fun, but not really top tier just yet but i think that urban fantasy uh, stories just generally are going to be like that for me so it is what it is i'm really hoping that the next one is uh even better than this one because it's a really good kind of story and setup and i just can't wait to read the rest of the series so yeah thank you guys very much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed if you did please leave a like subscribe and comment down below let me know your thought and thank you guys very much for watching see you guys later